Yeah, I'm back on. Great. Um, I should be able to make up for the uh, for the rest of the time and make sure that we can have uh, lunch in, in time. Why are we talking about RDKB <laughs> uh, at a at the Purple Summit? Because really, there are we. It's not a bad thing. Just as there is an Android and an iOS, it's not a bad thing that there is a Purple OS and an RDKB. RDK is uh, more dominant in the Doxy space. We're not really addressing the Doxy space at, at the moment. There are essentially opportunities for us to collaborate. So the first set of slides that I have is an overview of the things that Purple does that are not currently addressed in, uh, in RDKB. Um, first part is what I mentioned in my low-level API uh, call the low-level interfaces. These are the same on all our devices. Well, you know, Doxis may be special, it's actually fairly straightforward, uh, but generally the, the, the problem space is exactly the same there. Um, it is actually true that in RDKB, a lot of there's a high dependencies, dependency on the low-level APIs that we've defined in there. Uh, there, one Wi-Fi, for example, is completely dependent on the uh, on a uh, low-level API compliant wireless driver. Uh, then, we have always coordinated uh, in the last uh, several years, in the last six years, on the kernel version upgrade cadence, as in, you've seen in uh, Peter Steinhorzer's uh, presentation on Purple OS, that the, a certain minimum version of a kernel is acceptable, but we also specify which newer versions of kernel are available. So currently, that will be 5.15, for Purple OS 3.1, uh, 6.1, and 6.6 .6 we're adding now. Uh, the two, the OSP v2 and the Freedom platform, so the newer versions of, no, this is a Freedom, no, it's always a Haze. So the newer versions of this are actually running kernel 6.1. That's coordinated with, uh, with the RDK world. The RDK guys uh, line up on the same things. Now, the, then we have our reference platforms. There is no such thing in RDKB. They're at the moment, they're fallen back to only using a Raspberry Pi. You can't really use that. You really need real silicon hardware, and that's what these are. And these devices will also, we also run RDKB, or at least the, uh, the Freedom and the OSP v2 also run RDKB. And we want to try to make sure that as you can order the devices for, uh, for your use in Purple OS, you'll also be able to order them to do RDKB development on them. Um, something RDK World has not addressed at all is the whole complexities with the NDAs that we have in there. Trying to solve that as well. Um, so I, while I'm speaking to the silicon vendors on opening up their interfaces, I'm also talking about uh, opening up their RDK meta layers to make sure that that is possible to also have a completely open build for RDK beyond these targets. Uh, then when it comes to remote management, so RDKB has always also been, from the beginning, designed around, uh, around TR181 data models, but that's happened in a very closed and proprietary man manner, uh, isolated from the environment. We've sort of dragged them back into the broadband forum to try to see that there is an alignment in there but the collaboration between Broadband Forum and Purple is, because is far more deep than the, the one in the RDK world. Um, the USB integration as well. There is a USB integration in RDKB. It's a bit older and it's not as active uh, and the, the project is not as, uh, as active. There is an opportunity for collaboration. And then when it comes to high level API certification, that's essentially a service that tests if USB works properly and if all the data models therein are uh, present and to some extent functional as well. There's really no reason why this high-level API certification that was developed in the, in, the, in the Purple Certification Working Group couldn't also be used on an RDKB device. Next, application software integration. You saw uh, Fabrice's LCM presentation. Um, that is designed from, the, from scratch, from the very beginning, including some code contribution to work both on Purple OS and on RDKB. 
And that's the envision that we have, right? So ideally, if we have a portable application, you're a vendor, you want to have a portable application, you should really only have to develop it once as deployment unit or compile it for every instruction set architecture uh, package. And then you should be able to deploy it both on Purple OS and on RDKB. This works today. Um, the, Fabrice also mentioned that uh, you could use a different bus interface. So we, you know, you were using this Unix domain socket, socket MTP interface. Um, the current deployment on RDKB with LCM that exists is using an RBus interface out, coming out of the, uh, the, the container. That's not what we want to do because that means that you have to build your deployment unit differently for RDKB as for Purple OS. We're going to try to fix that in the long term so that also on RDKB you can deploy just exactly the same application. You shouldn't have to worry. Um, that's actually the, the great value to LCM to, uh, to operators who, who deploy both, right? Um, let's see. Uh, standards alliance, we're much more closely aligned with standards. I sort of mentioned that already when it comes to data models, but there's more than that, as you noticed with, uh, with EasyMesh. Then we have an EasyMesh implementation. Um, RDKB does not. Uh, the purple mesh from the very beginning was designed to work both on RDKB and on uh, purple OS, and it does so. We've always maintained that consistently. Uh, since the beginning. So we've had an RDKB target in collaboration with RDK management um, in the Purple Mesh CI, and we built for that as well. We were thinking of maybe doing a demo, but we didn't get around to it. But essentially, Purple Mesh can be built for, uh, for it as well. This is a bit of my slide that I forgot to remove. <laughs> you can ignore that. So the low-level API is the first aspect. So digging a little bit deeper into that, but not too deep is that um, the work that we've been doing on Wi-Fi 7 is uh, in the low-level API has to some level been coordinated with the, with the RDK world as well. Um, because as I mentioned, if you're using one Wi-Fi on RDKB, then you have to be, have a compliant low-level API. There can be no patches. So we're doing the work to make sure that's in purple to make sure that this works on RDKB as well. Wi-Fi sensing, there is something mostly proprietary in RDKB. We're really defining the interfaces now together with the silicon vendors and the sensing vendor applications. By next week, we should have defined a, uh, a standardized uh, high-level and low-level API for this. Uh, QoS across uh, Wi-Fi mesh is, also, is, a, is a purple mesh and low-level API uh, thing. Uh, there, is, there is no QoS on the roadmap anywhere in RDKB. We're trying to make sure that that's there. Cellular is where RDKB is a little bit ahead of us because there's a cellular manager. We're going to essentially either try to collaborate with that or do the same thing. Uh, these are things that we've been working on in 2023 and continuing to work on in 2024. Um, the rest, I think I'll skip it because it's just uh, another slide. Uh, this essentially points out the same thing of the rules of the reference uh, targets where we are trying to do it not only for uh, purple OS, but also for RDKB. Let's see. And then there's the rest of it. All of this other stuff, so, right, so we've already established the low-level API is common. This little block here in the middle, this Linux, it just says Linux. I deliberately did not put purple OS on there because this can be, all of this can be RDKB as well. I can tell you of, of an operator who is who's doing exactly this and following this, exactly this structure of using the secure manufacturing data, of using the standardized, um, standardized uh, partition table uh, layout. Um, you, as mentioned, you can implement uh, LCM in there. We, the secure software image, uh, image uh, signature format and image can perfectly well work on RDKB as well. And I, again, know of an operator that's, al that's already using the SW update mechanism that we're planning to use for that. And then the further steps of doing secure boot and potentially including a trusted execution environment with a, with a crypto API that gives you access to a key in the manufacturing in, in the encrypted 
key in the manufacturing data. As Evgeny said, for this slide, it, it's all tied together. All of that can work on RDKB as well. There's absolutely nothing to any of this that is specific to Purple OS. So we're open to the, the collaboration with the RDK world. And, uh, and I've already reached out on Olive, Olive Branch for, uh, for collaboration. Now you would ask why? Well, to begin with, we're an open source organization. We are not competing against anybody else. There's no point uh, to, to doing that. Secondly, the more vendors uh, we can, the more operators especially, and vendors we can get on our side, the more uh, progress we get here. Because this, all of the stuff we're doing here in purple is by funding and by collaboration. So if we get collaboration from the side of the RDK world as well, we're essentially growing the pool of people who want to work on this. Uh, the other aspect is for silicon vendors, this is probably much easier as well. Because today they have to deal with uh, multiple SDKs, one for OpenWRT that they can mostly reuse for purple OS, one for RDKB. We're trying to, we want to try to make it so that you should simply have a mostly identical deliverable for both, with only the differences being in meta layers for open embedded for RDKB versus feeds for uh, built root feeds for uh, Purple OS. So that's the, the whole goal there. And with that, one minute to lunchtime, so I think 